right, so there's three more people we can easily lose. And then there's Tom Sinkowski. He's useless. Go on. Welcome back, y'all. How's everybody doing out there in WBB land? We are back with another video. And today we're talking about the coaching carousel that has taken over free agency. Since the end of the regular season, which was only five and a half weeks ago, we have seen an unprecedented number of head coach firings. Step into my office. Why? Because you're f***ing fired. Some, if not many of these moves, had fans and media like scratching their heads, questioning what exactly were these franchises doing and if they were making the right decision. In today's video, we will take it to the only place that can truly decide. The WNBA now Court of Appeals. Court is in no way fictional. All rulings are final. Appeals, of course, will be heard in the comment section of this video. The WNBA now Court of Appeals guarantees verdicts to be delivered swiftly, and this court promises to rule on whether these firings were fair or foul. Case number 1-924, Defendant Kurt Miller. Miller was abruptly fired less than a week after the regular season ended and after only two seasons in Los Angeles. The news sent shockwaves throughout the WNBA landscape and had many people criticizing the decision. With LA's drafting of two lottery picks in Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson and another lottery pick on the way in 2025, whispers had been long since swirling that Miller wasn't the guy for the job and he had no credible track record at developing young talent. The whispers eventually made their way to management and management agreed. With all the evidence and testimony presented today, we find the firing fair. Case number 2-927, defendant, Teresa Weatherspoon. Even more shocking than the Miller news, Spoon's dismissal was the shot heard around the world. Not only was she fired less than 12 months after getting the gig, consensus around the league was that she had performed much better than expected. New GM Jeff Pagliaca gave little more than boilerplate fare about the firing and no real insight as to why this couldn't have worked. With Chicago yet to name a replacement, this move looks worse by the day. In a doggy dog league, you better have a plan. And without a surefire successor waiting in the wings, the evidence in this case is clear. We find this firing foul. Case number 3-102, defendant, Tanisha Wright. After being given a five-year contract extension after the 2022 season, the Tanisha Wright experiment came to an end only two seasons later. After a very disappointing 2024 that saw Atlanta finish four games back of their 2023 record and a full 10 games under 500, the writing was on the wall in Atlanta. Wright was 34 and 46 over the last two years, and the team and franchise star Ryan Howard never saw the maturation management would need to see in order to keep this train on the tracks. In one of the least controversial rulings of the day, this court finds the firing fair. Case number 4-1018, defendant Latricia Trammell. After only two seasons in Dallas, LT was relieved of duties in another surprising dismissal. There was no doubt disappointment after the regression from the 22-18 and 18 semifinal team from 2023, but I think Trammell was a casualty of expectations. The media was projecting this team to be right back in the thick of it this year, seemingly not even considering their best player and 25-year-old wonderkin, Satu Sabali, would be sidelined for the first 25 games of the season. Add Natasha Howard missing another 11 games and Arike Gubawale's play style, this was certainly the recipe for the very type of season we witnessed. It looks like now management will be pulling the plug on this iteration and preparing for a full rebuild. After a long, thorough, and difficult review of the evidence, we find this firing fair. Case number 5-1023, defendant Eric Tebow. This termination turned out to be a double-dip firing as Eric's dad, Mike, the Mystics general manager, was also let go. This news hit the WNBA community hard as the Tebow family has long been synonymous with the Mystics organization. In fact, it was only six years ago that Mike brought a title to DC as head coach. Looking back at the end of the season, however, it did seem curious why a potential lottery team was trying so desperately to make the playoffs. 
With this firing, it's entirely possible that Eric was given one season to hit certain benchmarks, the playoffs perhaps, and that's the reason for his dismissal. Regardless of ownership's official line, like many teams this offseason, it looks like DC is hitting the hard reset and looking to buy new. We rule this firing fair. Case number 6-1027, Defendant Christy Sides. In one of the more controversial cases we have on the docket today, the Sides firing is an exercise in how not to do business. It was widely reported that while Sides was still employed, team management was in open dialogue with head coach Stephanie White. The legality of these discussions seems to be murky at best, but regardless of if it's above board, it's unquestionably Bush League. As to whether the firing was warranted, that's an interesting question. On one end, the team saw steady improvement in her first year, followed by a massive leap to the playoffs in her sophomore campaign. Some will argue, of course, this was due in large part to the addition of superstar point guard, first team All-WNBA Rookie of the Year, Caitlin Clark. This was the court's hardest decision of the day, but after careful deliberation, while the court finds the firing low rent in its execution, we have no choice but to rule this firing fair. Case number 7-1028, Defendant Stephanie White. In our last case of the day, we have a cut and dry case of get me the hell out of Dodge. With one year still remaining on her current contract, White made it abundantly clear her time in Connecticut was done regardless if she was still coaching the Sun next season. It seems as if the team, instead of dragging out a potentially contentious 2025, decided it better to cut ties now and look for a new head coach. The court is a bit miffed at this case, if we're being honest, because we don't really see this as a firing. With that in mind, we rule this case mistrial. And there you have it, folks. Seven coaches hit the waiver wire, and we're not even in November. It's going to be fascinating to see who goes where and when. As I mentioned at the top, send your appeals in the comment section. Let me know what judgments you think this court got wrong. And if you're so inclined, you can find an in-depth podcast covering all the coaching vacancies, leading candidates, and implications of what this could signal with the league's growth on the WNBA Now YouTube page. But on the real, thanks for watching. Like, share, and hey! Hit that subscribe button. It's free.